Jimmy Moore. I'm a professor of bioengineering at Imperial College in London. Um, I do biomechanics research, uh, which historically has been mostly in, in the blood flow system, looking at blood flows and arteries, but um, in the last 10 years got interested in uh, fluid movement in the lymphatic vessels and how we can do experiments and modeling to better understand the way the body moves fluid around. Uh, in particular, lymph, which, as, as you probably know, is, is uh, hugely important for not just edema development, but cancer spread, uh, immune function, lots, lots of good reasons to, to study that system. When I give seminars to other bioengineers about my research, I have to spend the first 10 minutes explaining, you know, kind of at a high school physiology level, what is the lymphatic system? Because people just are not, are not familiar with it. It's a very obscure system. I mean, the, the, the vessels are really tiny. Um, you know, the largest vessel, lymphatic vessel in the body is only a few millimeters in diameter compared to the aorta, which is about like this. And, um, you know, it's relatively low pressure, low flow. It's, it's actually an easy system to miss if you're, if you're kind of dissecting a, a body open. That's a problem, I think, in, in terms of educating the public and, and getting, you know, eventually research funding for, for, for more activities in this area. But I, to me, it's also an opportunity. Um, if you look at what's known about the biomechanics of blood flow in arteries, I mean, there's a huge volume of research out there and thousands and thousands of papers. And, it, and it's great because heart disease kills a lot of people. But the, it, in the lymphatic system, there's, there's almost nothing that's, you know, really, to, our knowledge is rudimentary at best. And, but, but that's an opportunity, right? Because everything we do is brand new now and, and has never been done before and, 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 and shows some new information, not just an increment on, on, on top of a mountain of information, but, you know, new information in an area that, that's really crying out for it. Once someone develops a condition like this, it's like you, how do, how do they know where to go? How do they, if their doctor doesn't even know? Now we're looking at lymph th flow through the lymphatic vessels, which are, which are very different because they're, they're very tiny, very low pressures, and they do their own pumping. So they, they, they collect from interstitial tissue beds that are basically at zero pressure, very low pressure. And it has to fight gravity and overcome viscosity and returning all that fluid to the, to the subclavian vein in the shoulder. And so, I mean, just overcoming gravity is a huge challenge. So it does it with this very cleverly designed, this beautifully designed system of vessels that squeeze and then check valves that keep the flow moving in the right direction. So um, because the vessels are so tiny, the flow patterns in them relative to, say, the airflow over a jet aircraft are, are actually pretty simple. So the fluid mechanics, we have a good handle on that. Um, we, we think we know what triggers the contraction under certain metabolic conditions. Um, so we have a fairly good handle on that. The valves are actually the most complex part of this, and the physics of these valves is just amazing. They're, they're incredible little structures. They're spaced apart maybe every millimeter or two in the lymphatic vessel, so very closely spaced. Um, they're made almost entirely of a of, of structural protein called elastin which is very stretchy like rubber. Uh, and they just kind of flop around and keep flow moving in the right direction. Mostly, I mean, you can have some backflow through these valves. They're slightly biased in the open position, which means that if all else fails, they're gonna stay open and let flow go through and not, not collapse, generally. Um, so uh, it's, it's, um, it only needs to pump about five liters a day up to your shoulder which is not a huge flow demand, but of course, if that's not happening, then you end up with all sorts of problems. So we've been studying with a combination of experiments and theoretical approaches, this pumping action, and um, trying to understand under what conditions it breaks down. And part of that is just to understand the normal, healthy uh, system. And, and as you know, they're, 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 there's just not a lot of background on it. So that's kind of our job right now is to understand the basic system. So we, if we can build up a network of lymphatic vessels representative of an arm, let's say, then we can do things like remove a lymph node, you know, simulate the removal of a lymph node, see if we can predict the development of edema, and then develop better technologies to, to deal with that edema. We had published our initial models and then our second level models that made those better and, and when we took some of that information out of those models and just started looking at which parameters in the model, I mean, there are lots of parameters in the model, right? And so we, we take them like, like sliders, like volume knobs, and we turn a parameter up and we turn it down. 
And if it doesn't affect the outcome, we move on to the next one, turn it up, turn it down, see what happens. So in it, that's, this is a, what we call a parameter sensitivity analysis. And we found one parameter that was really, really important that we didn't expect to really be that important. There are no measurements on it in the, in the, in the literature, so we had to kind of design our own experiments to do that. So part of what I do is basic research, but then the engineer in me wants to come up with solutions to problems. That's, that's kind of the definition of engineering. And um, so we've, we've actually already got some ideas for implantable devices or um, mechanical aids um, that, that we, you know, based on the results of our research so far, we, we think are going to help.